In the city of the sage, all its inhabitants chant the status of the chief, who rises above them on a special structure. A man with white hair throws his head back high, smiling contentedly. The hero thinks that the war, which lasted five hundred years and took many lives of fighters, is finally over. Blond shouts to his people that as long as he lives, there will be no more wars in the world. People rejoice after hearing the words of the sage and thank him for establishing peace throughout the world. Having finished his speech, the man flies into the air and heads to his throne. Five hundred years ago, this world changed and all living beings gained divine power. A great turmoil began, called the end of time. The main character, Vincent Larim, having gone through countless critical moments and opportunities, became the strongest, who has no equal in strength in this world. Sitting on his throne, the sage thinks that he can finally rest properly and enjoy this precious peace. However, the man's peace is disturbed by a guest who comes to him. With a little annoyance in his voice, Vince tells the newcomer that he did not allow anyone to come to him while he was in this place. The man with black hair chuckles at the reaction of the blonde man and asks why these rules apply to him, the brother of the sage. Vincent reluctantly opens his gray eyes and tells the black-haired man that he is the naughtiest of all the siblings. The sage's brother holds in his hand a talisman, a secret letter from the head of the Tao sect. When a man hears from which sex to the letter came, he immediately remembers Roxanne Bear. The woman is self-satisfied by nature, so she will never ask for anything. Vincent takes the talisman, but does not understand why Roxanne sent him, because they agreed with all the clans to send them only in emergency situations. The sage's brother says goodbye to the fair-haired one, saying that it is time for him to go. Vince looks at the letter carefully and suddenly remembers something humiliating. Fifteen years ago, the main character practiced the secret of nine revolutions in one secret cold spring. At that moment, when the sage was on the verge of a critical point of learning, Roxanne Bear suddenly appeared. The girl jumped into the water and landed right in front of Vincent's nose. The black-haired girl was hugged tightly by the man, and her face was covered with a bright blush. The fair-haired man was very angry with Roxanne for disturbing him so brazenly. However, as it turned out, she was pursued by assassins and poisoned with powerful young powder. Men in hidden clothing began to attack the heroes, shouting at them that they would die together. Vincent stopped the attack using the frozen water sword technique. After the defeat of his opponents, the hero, with Roxana in his arms, jumped out of the lake. However, Vince began to feel pain from the air, which began to move along the side vessel and get out of control. Having laid the girl on the ground, the man decided to restore his body. The main character frowned and tried to direct the air back to the source and put the network of vessels in order. Suddenly, Roxana rose from the ground and moved closer to the sage, distracting him from his meditation. Looking at the black-haired woman with caution, Vincent did not know what to do, since one of his movements could put an end to all the efforts expended. The man's reddened body began to shake with anger at the girl, and he shouted at her so that she would not interfere with him. Moving even closer, Roxana asked to help her remove the poison as quickly as possible, because the situation was urgent. Having finally closed the distance, the black-haired girl touched the sage's lips with her lips. Vince opened his eyes wide, looking in shock at the girl kissing him. Having gotten rid of the poison, Roxana stands up, smiling contentedly. The black-haired woman finally turns to the sage, saying that if he has problems in the future, she will definitely return the favor for today. The man, who was unable to move, gritted his teeth and was angry at the culprit who had sullied his purity, and easily left after that. Remembering this situation, the fair-haired man still does not understand how he, the hero of the era, could be used as a tool to neutralize the poison. The heroes later met during a battle when all the clans were besieging the demon clan. Then the black-haired woman extended her hand to the man for acquaintance, introducing herself as a man of the Tao clan, the Order of the Nine States. Awkwardly shaking the girl's hand, the sage mentioned that they had met somewhere before. However, Roxana did not attach any importance to this, saying that she had a bad memory for faces. After this, the heroes worked together many times during battles, but the black-haired one treated Vince like a stranger. Roxanne Bear is a courageous and brave woman, not inferior to men in strength. After many years of fierce struggle, the girl became the head of the Tao sect. The sage unseals the talisman, from which Roxana herself appears, telling the place of today's meeting to discuss an important matter. Frustrated by the message, 
Vincent does not understand how important the matter could still be since the demonic invasion was suppressed. Blonde flies to the top of the peak of no return. Vince looks around and notices exactly the place where that humiliating story took place. The hero decides to go in the opposite direction, so as not to return to the memories of being deprived of purity. The sage sits down at the table, waiting for the head of the Dao clan. A silhouette appears behind the blonde man, who is surprised that Vincent came first. The hero replies that he was too curious about what made the head of the Dao sect use the Yin talisman. Roxana, without answering anything, passes by the sage and sits down opposite him. The girl raises her hand above the table and, with the help of some technique, dishes appear on it. The next moment, water is drawn into the kettle from the source on its own. Carefully and elegantly, the black-haired woman pours water into the bowl. The head of the Tao invites the man to try the famous 500-year-old Dahong tea. Taking a sip from a cup, the fair-haired man asks the girl which of the followers of the unrighteous path is up to something. The girl says with calm in her voice that the matter concerns their son. The man asks in the same tone what happened to their son. However, the next moment the sage realizes what the head of Tao just said and splashes the entire drink from his mouth in her direction. Vincent shouts at Roxanne in shock and worry, not understanding which son he is talking about because he has no children with her. The girl wipes her face and asks Vince to calm down first. The sage hits the table with great force with his palms, causing it to crumble into small particles. Blonde angrily shouts that other than a few battles together, they had no friendship or relationship. The man immediately remembers the only time he and the black-haired woman had close contact. Roxanne confirms that it was on that occasion that she used it to neutralize the poison. The sage points to the head of Tao and still says in the same loud tone that the girl has finally admitted that she remembers that day. The black-haired woman asks Vincent to calm down, because it's not his fault. The fair-haired man only begins to get angrier, saying that all his life he has treated women with respect, but they shamelessly took advantage of him like this without even thanking him. The girl can't stand it, and also yells at him to shut up if she doesn't want the entire Dao sect to find out about everything. Realizing what he has done, the sage looks around cautiously. Roxanne asks the era hero why he is so nervous since he has done nothing wrong. Vince realizes that this is indeed the case and finally sits down, saying that all the blame lies with the head of the Dao sect. The black-haired girl agrees with the words of the sage, and says that all these years she has been responsible for herself. Realizing that Roxana will now tell her why she decided to reveal her secret right now, the fair-haired man stops her. Vincent rubs the bridge of his nose, saying he needs to calm down a little first. The man picks up a teapot and drinks 500-year-old Dahong tea in one gulp. Having drunk enough tea, Vince places the dishes on the table with a loud thud. The fair-haired man with eyes full of confidence looks at the head of the Dao sect. Without hesitation for a second, the sage invites the black-haired woman to marry him. Roxanne's cheeks turn red at the man's words, but she asks him to repeat what he said because she thinks she heard it wrong. Instead of answering, Vince uses force to lift the log into the air. The blonde then clenches his fist, causing the tree to shrink. As a result, a wedding ring is formed from a log heated to sparks. Vincent says that although they do not have love, having a child obliges them to get married. However, the girl pushes the floating ring away from her. Finally blushing, the head of the Dao sect says that she has no intention of marrying the fair-haired man. Vince is angry at the black-haired woman's refusal because he doesn't understand why she told him that they have a son together. Roxana hesitates over the answer and cannot say anything. Gathering his courage, the leader approaches the blonde man to say something. Awkwardly tucking her hair behind her ear, the girl embarrassedly whispers something to the sage. What he heard hits Vincent hard, and he suddenly turns to the mother of his child. The space between the characters shrinks sharply, and they find themselves very close to each other. However, just as quickly as they approached each other, the man and girl turned away in embarrassment. To break the awkward pause, Vince clears his throat and says that he will answer what Roxanne said in a few days. Blonde begins to leave, but the head of the Dao sect stops him. The sage turns to the black-haired woman, asking what she wants to say. Roxana says she doesn't understand why the man so easily believed her that they had a child together. Vincent admits that the first meeting left a bad impression of her, and he thought that she was an ill-mannered rude person. Because of these words, the black-haired girl squeezes the table tightly, and it crumbles into pieces. The man continues, saying that during the battles, he changed his mind about the head of Dao and began to admire her. Now the girl stopped feeling angry towards the fair-haired man, 
but looked at him in surprise and embarrassment. The hero of the era ended his speech by saying that he was thinking about becoming Roxanne's blood brother. The black-haired woman was not happy with this turn of events, so she decided to throw a teapot at the sage, saying that she would never become his brother. The man says goodbye to the mother of his child in a confident tone, and says that they will see each other in a couple of days. Having flown far away from the Tao sect, Vince begins to rush about in the night sky, not understanding how this could happen. Cold sweat flows all over the sage's body, and all his thoughts are occupied with his son. Flying over the sea, a man stops and screams into the void with all his might. The heart of the hero of the era is beating at breakneck speed, intending to jump out of his chest. The sage tries to calm himself, not understanding why. Even because of a thousand powerful enemies, his heart did not beat as hard as it does now. However, this does not work out for the fair-haired one, and he decides to find someone to fight him. Vincent flies to the demonic sect in the heavenly palace. The guards notice the sage approaching and begin to sound the alarm. The man stops in front of the palace and thinks that the alarm here is too slow. The hero of the era uses the power of the lion's roar, which amplifies his voice many times and calls Viola race to battle. The entire palace begins to become covered in purple smoke. The stranger breaks through this fog and flies straight to the main character. Sparks are seen in the sky due to two powerful opponents colliding. Blonde says that the girl has developed her skills well, because there are few people in the world who can force him to use at least 20% of his body. Viola asks why the sage suddenly came here. Vincent says that he wants to fight to calm his irritation. The girl doesn't ask anything else and happily says to attack her. The residents of the palace, with fear in their voices, wonder why the fair-haired man could come here and whether he will attack them again. People whisper and tell each other to pray that the hero of the era doesn't get angry with them, since he could destroy this place to the ground. After a small battle, the heroes sit on the roof of one of the buildings and drink together. Viola addresses the man as a brother, and says that he takes his anger out on her every time something bothers him. However, Vincent tells the girl that he rarely comes and does not complain that she used to constantly try to capture him. The sage says that in all the heavens, only race can cheer him up. Viola laughs joyfully, pleased with the hero's words. The girl replies that only the fair-haired one fights with her like a man, and not like the others, who show unnecessary softness. Vincent doesn't hit race on the shoulder too hard, saying they're like best friends. Viola decides to start a conversation about who could have alarmed the invincible sage. The blonde man honestly admits what happened and says that he suddenly found out that he and Roxana have a son together. Because of such unexpected news, the drink does not stay in Viola's mouth for long and ends up on the sage's face. The girl laughs and apologizes, saying that it shocked her too much. However, the laughter quickly stops and Race looks at the hero seriously. Seeing this look from the girl, Vince jumps up and says that he really didn't know anything about this. Then the fair-haired man begins to tell a story that happened to him in a secret cold water. The story is interrupted by the cry of a little girl who demands that the sage not offend her mother. A copy of Viola Ray stands in front of the heroes, clenching her fists. The girl runs up to Vincent and starts hitting him on the chest. The blonde man looks at Viola in surprise and points to her copy. The girl confirms the hero's guess that she is the mother of this girl. The man says that it is unusual for such a cold-blooded world that the baby should guard her mother so jealously. However, the next moment the sage feels pain in the abdomen. This same sweet girl decided to use a spike that destroys immortals to attack the enemy. The weapon does not cause any harm to the fair-haired man, and he lifts the copy of Viola off the ground by the scruff of the neck. Race chuckles at this situation, watching from the side. Vincent takes the weapon away saying that the girl could get hurt with the thing if she's not careful. The mechanism on the object clicks and many small spikes appear from it. Vince shouts indignantly at Viola's daughter, while opening his mouth wide. The girl takes advantage of this opportunity and throws a ball towards the sage. The ball ends up in the man's mouth and he accidentally swallows it. Raising his head proudly, Vincent says that even a hundred poisons cannot poison him. However, at the last word, the fair-haired man's face suddenly twisted. The man grabs his throat and shouts inquiringly why his tongue has such strong bitterness and his throat is still burning. Viola tells the sage that her daughter got this ball from five poisonous children, and although it is not very poisonous, it has an unbearably unpleasant taste. Still very sick, Vince says children shouldn't do this kind of stuff. 
the protagonist finds his salvation from the bitter taste in the jaws that he and Viola recently enjoyed. The blonde man opens two cans at once and drinks them in one gulp. Having almost finished another jar, the sage exhales with relief, feeling that he has become much better. Vincent yells at race, asking who the father of this terribly stubborn and disobedient girl is. The sage begins to drink from the can again, and the girl calmly tells him that he himself is the father. The blonde's eyes widen in shock and he nearly chokes on his drink. Vince repeats the same action that Viola did recently, throwing everything he has in his mouth onto her. The girl just calmly waves her wet hair, showing that she understands the man's reaction. Race rubs her daughter's head, causing it to glow purple. A copy of Viola rises into the air and flies away somewhere by the will of her mother's power. The girl tells Vincent that she will explain later how this could happen. The blonde shakes his head from side to side, trying to recover from Viola's words. Ray suggests the sage take a few sips of the drink to cheer up. The man looks doubtfully at the can the girl holds out, wondering if this is a good idea. However, the next moment the hero throws his head back and drinks everything in one gulp. After this, Vincent decides to once again clarify who the father of that girl is. Viola still confidently answers that the father of the child is a sage. The blonde man shouts at the girl, saying that she is lying, because there was absolutely nothing between them. Ray says with sadness in his voice that the man really forgot everything. Viola recalls that ten years ago, the protagonist's newly formed divine power got out of control and he forced the demons to fight together against him. The sage replies that he remembers how his opponents used dirty tricks, plotted in trees and dispatched him with all kinds of poisons. Viola continues her story, saying that after the blonde was caught, the powers of both sides returned to a state of rivalry. Then a great civil strife began, because some cunning people wanted to dominate the world. Vincent thinks about the girl's words, remembering that at that time he was locked in a hellish prison, where he almost died. Viola playfully touches the sage's nose with the pad of her index finger, saying that fate favors him, that's why he survived. The man says that only race is the only one who dares to treat him so freely. The girl approaches the fair-haired man's face and asks him thanks to whom she became a devil. The hero pushes Viola away from him, asking her to get closer to the point. The she-devil reminds the man that at that time she was cultivating the technique of the white maiden, the moon of the underworld. Vincent says that he knows that this is a unique technique of the girl's sect, which is able to link all the techniques of other people to her body. Since this power can also increase a person's strength, the sect produced many great demons, but the desire to possess it destroyed the Viola sect. The girl confirms the man's words, saying that after five ancient demons captured him, they conspired against her. The opponents wanted to divide the demon's magical power equally and then they could have divided all of China in one fell swoop. Hearing Race's words, the sage, out of anger, squeezes the jar with force and sprays all the contents out of it. The fair-haired man looks at his palm, in which lies a stone shimmering with all the colors of the rainbow. Vince's eyes seem to burn with fire from the memories of the enemies who forced him to endure multiple humiliations. Viola leans on the sage and asks him not to get excited, because if he saw the demons now, he would not be so angry. The man turns a surprised look at the girl, asking what she means. Race says that the thousand-armed demon Buddha has been in seclusion for ten days after the fair-haired one destroyed his cultivation. The sage's former opponent took the path of truth and began traveling through the holy land to atone for his sins. Vincent sighs and says that he cannot kill this demon, since he decided to reform. Viola continues and talks about the venerable demon of Ean Mountain who considered himself the best in the world until he saw how the main character killed 3,000 evil demons with one blow. The man was so scared because of this that his mind became clouded, and he is now being treated in a psychiatric hospital. After this, the demonist tells the sage what is happening to the others. This scent closes his eyes and says that he did not expect that the lives of his opponents would change so much. The girl takes the rainbow stone from the hero's palm. Viola carefully examines the jewelry saying that the man is becoming more and more scary, because he was able to turn an ordinary jar into a rare illusory stone. Holding the gem against the backdrop of the red moon, Race tells the sage that if he uses it, he will drive a large number of girls crazy. Vince indignantly shouts at the demoness not to change the subject. Viola says that the demons drugged her with an aphrodisiac called Scorching Sun Scattering. However, the girl did not obey so easily and ran away, risking her life. 
Race's body was heavily poisoned, and she knew she couldn't live on the run for the rest of her life. Viola figured out what to do even if her cultivation was taken away. The girl used her power and moved herself to another place. The demoness ended up in the place where Vincent was held in strong chains. Viola pressed herself against the man's chest, looking at him with a greedy gaze. The sage, feeling someone's warmth, began to come to his senses. However, Race immediately used the soul sealing technique, preventing Vince from waking up completely. While the blonde fell back into sleep, the girl began to take off her clothes. After Viola's story, the sage violently shakes her, asking why she chose him. The demoness covers her cheeks and replies that it's all about the man's beauty. Vincent calls Race's words nonsense, saying that no one can match the beauty of the thousand-armed demon. The girl pretends that she doesn't understand why the man is saying this, but he still demands to tell him the truth. Viola chuckles, saying that the sage knows himself well. The demoness admits that she herself thought a lot about this, because it was thanks to her choice that she became the head of the demonic sect. Race points to the man and says that if she had not chosen him, she would have died long ago. Vincent calls the girl a demon who read everything, but he still treats her like a little sister. Viola laughs cheerfully at the man's reaction. However, the laughter stops when the sage gets close to Race's face. Blonde takes a rare illusory stone from the demoness's palm. The hero picks up the gem and points his index finger at it, causing the gem to begin to smoke. A bright beam suddenly flashes past the girl's face, causing her eyes to widen. The stone formed a ring, beautifully shimmering in different colors. Vincent hands the jewelry to Viola asking her to marry him. The girl looks at the ring with admiration. Race takes the ring and presses it to her chest, saying that she accepts it, but refuses the marriage. The man looks at the demoness in bewilderment, asking what she means. Viola says she meant exactly what she said. The sage shouts loudly that he and Roxana agreed and both simply refused him. Race asks Vincent what reason the Dao sect leader used to reject the blonde man. The hero responds that the girl was afraid that as soon as the child received the mark of the son of a sage, he would become a target for the man's enemies. The demoness agrees with Roxanne's thoughts, saying that Vince will face a lot of problems in the future. Although the fair-haired man is the most powerful person in the world, many with strong techniques are eager to take his place. The great Roxasas rule in the west, Moni in the south, and Hanli in the north. The east is controlled by the heavenly kingdom which controls the countries of the Eastern Sea, and they all want Vincent's death. Viola says that many difficult battles await the man ahead, so children will become his weakness. The fair-haired one clarifies whether the child will be safe here, where all the enemies who betrayed the true path are hiding. The demoness reassures Vince, saying that he does not need to worry about this, because her daughter is called evil fate for a reason. The hero sits down with the girl and asks her if she shouldn't worry about her daughter's future. Viola asks the blonde why he doesn't worry about her since she used to be a witch who devastated the world. The sage tries to answer the demoness, but she covers his mouth. The girl asks the man to remember the ideals for which he fought at the beginning, because she herself has changed them, and now she does not think that harmony and peace are bad. Vincent clutches the left side of his chest, saying that having children with two people like that is too much for his heart. Race laughs, warning that the hero needs to get used to this. Blonde looks at the girl in surprise, not understanding what she is talking about. Viola explains that Lisa Kaysen also gave birth to a daughter for the sage. Hearing this name, Vincent remembers a pink-haired girl with fox ears. A silent scream freezes on the man's face, and horror is reflected in his eyes. A loud scream is heard throughout the palace, causing the walls to begin to collapse. A copy of Viola from one of the roofs looks at the hastily flying away sage. Race grins saying that it's getting more and more interesting. The blonde one flies forward at great speed, thinking about how he and Lisa can have a child. The man is horrified, realizing that he cannot remember absolutely nothing. However, after a second the hero stops abruptly, and one thought comes into his head. Twelve years ago, the great country of Roxasa set out to expand east from the west. The first step was to send the fifth prince, Vilas Birin, to the land of all demons, Kunlun, which is the gateway to the southwest of China. The purpose of the dispatch was to marry the great emperor Rakshasa to the nine-tailed demon Fox Kaysen. The sage was entrusted to go to Kunlun as an envoy of China. That day, the fair-haired man killed the fifth crown emperor with one blow of his sword. The girl who saw the murder then said that she did not think that the great country of Rakshasa would attack her homeland. So she made a deal. 
However, the fox asked the sage what China wanted from her country. Vincent replied that they had nothing to fear, because Roxasa had sent Vilius to demonstrate her power, and they would not go to war over the death of the messenger. Suddenly the girl began to applaud the man. The fox praised the blonde's martial arts and wisdom. The hero reservedly thanked the demoness for the compliment. The girl asked the Chinese envoy what she should do if the Rokshasas got angry and forced her to submit to them. The sage answered the fox that there were internecine wars going on within this country, so it was better for them not to meddle here. The man's weapon began to burn with blue flames, and he stuck it into the ground, next to the prince's head. The demoness continued to question the Chinese envoy, asking him how they differed from Rakshasa. The girl opened the tool and decided to leave her secluded place. The white fox with the beautiful appearance and beautiful curves finally showed herself. Touching the sage with her shoulder, the fox said that her country must constantly bow, pay tribute and obey in order to maintain peace with others. The pink-haired girl fixed her gaze on the protagonist's eyes and asked him what they would have to do for China. Vincent replied that his country would not demand any of these things because they wanted to be friends. The fox did not expect such an answer and repeated the envoy's phrase in surprise. The man explains that they want to help each other in trouble, coexist peacefully and be equal. The fox burst into loud laughter at the blonde's words, clutching his stomach. Vince, not understanding the reason for this reaction, asks the pink-haired girl about it. The girl asks to give her time to catch her breath and comprehend all this. After some time, the fox calms down and exhales with relief. Kaysen looks at the sage carefully with burning bright red eyes, saying that he wants to ask for advice. The blonde's mind becomes clouded and his pupils turn purple. Soaring in the starry sky, the man remembers that the next day after meeting the fox he returned, but does not remember what happened before his return. Ruffling his hair, Vincent thinks that guessing and reasoning is not his strong country, and he solves all issues with action. The hero is horrified by the thought that after a ten-year life and death struggle, the fox was able to find a way to outweet him. The man imagines how the girl will beg him on her knees to forgive her. The sage laughs evilly, wondering what methods he will use to force the fox to tell the truth. Vince goes to the country where this cunning demoness lives. A special envoy from Roxas arrives in the main hall. A fair-haired man watches this from the side, hiding behind someone's house. The main character does not know what to do, because he cannot now angrily approach, point his finger and ask a question loudly. The man is rehearsing how he will menacingly ask what the girl did to him that day. However, he changes his mind about asking in this tone, as it sounds too cruel. Someone behind the sage's back calls him dad and asks what he's doing here. He answers the stranger that he came to bother Lisa Kaysen. The voice asks the fair-haired man why he needs his mother. At this moment, the hero understands what the conversation is about and turns to the stranger. Vincent sees a little girl in front of him, with an appearance like Kazan. The little girl smiles sweetly and tells her dad not to worry, because she was the one who spoke to him. The sage sighs with relief, realizing that all this time he was simply communicating with his daughter. However, after this thought, it finally dawns on the fair-haired man that he really was talking to his child all this time. Vin screams in surprise and the guards hear it, thinking that someone has invaded them. The hero looks at the approaching warriors, thinking that this would not be the best way to appear. The man takes a special position, lightning begins to sparkle from his eyes and a flow of energy forms around him. The sage uses the yin and yang reversal technique, which is capable of rewinding all of time by 30 seconds. Vincent returns at the moment when the girl says that it was she who spoke to him. The blonde man wipes the sweat from his forehead, which has come from worrying about being caught spying on him. The hero ruffles the baby's hair and asks who her parents are, since it is dangerous to run alone around the imperial court. The girl answers the man that her mother is the same seductive fox he spoke about, and her father is the sage himself. Vincent again screams loudly to the whole area, forgetting that he really is the father of this fox. Hearing the guards running towards them, the blonde man once again distorts space and time, returning thirty seconds ago. Vince drops to his hands and knees, realizing he needs to react more subtly. The sage does not understand what to do, because he has never fought with children. The hero leans over to the little fox and asks if Lisa Kazan was the one who told her that he was her father. The girl looks admiringly at the man and answers his question positively, saying that she is happy that he came. The child holds out a game similar to the main character and says that she has been waiting for him on the roof of the throne room for twelve years, day and night. 
Yesterday the fox saw a falling star so that the father, like a great sage, came down from the sky and saved them. Smiling sweetly, the girl happily says that she did not expect her wish to come true. Tears appear in the man's eyes, as he is very sorry that the child missed him so much. Feeling guilty and terrible remorse, the blonde man gets down on one knee and spreads his arms to the sides, wanting to hug his daughter. However, the girl does not rush into her father's arms, but only approaches his face, asking him to save her and her mother. Vincent frowns and asks what he has to save them from. The fox says that Rakshasa's ambassador has arrived and demands tribute from them, and yesterday they sent a letter with a marriage proposal. However, marriage is offered not only to Lisa Kaysen, but also to the girl herself, who they want to marry with the third prince. Vincent becomes very angry, not understanding why the ruler of Roxasa is creating problems at a time when this country is in the process of reconstruction. The sage, with a gloomy face, rises sharply and tells his daughter to follow him. The girl asks in surprise where they are going. Vince says he intends to intervene and teach Roxas' henchman a lesson. The fox happily hugs her father, saying that she can rely on him. The hero lifts the girl in his arms, warning her to hold on tightly to him. In the throne room, the envoy asks the queen to give an answer to the request for marriage with the second prince of Roxasa. Lisa Kazan says that her child is too young to get married, so she will only discuss this with her when she grows up. The envoy says that they have taken this into account, so it is better for the girl to go to the capital to get a better education, and when she reaches marriageable age, then they will get married. The queen says that she would be uneasy if her only daughter was too far away from her. The man says that they don't have to be separated, since a teacher sent from Rakshasa to educate the princess has already arrived here. Lisa says that they don't have to worry because there are no problems with education in her country. The messenger points to a man in a cloak standing nearby and asks the queen if she has teachers who can compare with their famous teacher, whom King Roxasa took the trouble to find. The body of the faceless man begins to be enveloped in some kind of black-green fog, and the hall plunges into darkness. The fox looks carefully at the stranger and asks the messenger who it is. The man says that the faceless one is the first disciple of the king's mentor, known as the Dark Lord of Life and Death. The sage Anudis Green takes off his cape. The man opens his bright green eyes and tells the queen that he has never taken on an apprentice, but is willing to take on the princess since she is incredibly talented. The messenger turns to Lisa Kazan, asking if she is now ready to agree to the king's courtesy. The queen asks to give her time, as this is not an easy decision. Behind the arrivals from Rakshas, someone's voice is heard saying that the princess already has a teacher. Vincent with his daughter in his arms walks towards the envays. The fox is greatly surprised by the arrival of the sage. However, after this the girl smiles tenderly, looking at her daughter. The girl rises from her seat and begins to descend, playfully asking who has entered the palace of her great kingdom of Yulan without notice. The fox approaches the sage and welcomes him to his country. Smiling widely, the fox asks the man what brought him here and why he didn't warn about his visit. The envies of Roxasa shudder when they hear what the queen called the newcomer. The man turns to Green and asks what they should do now, since no one can defeat the blonde one. Anudis says that the sage is lying to prevent him from taking the princess as his disciple. Hearing the teacher's words, the envoy confidently agrees with them, realizing that they still have a chance to convince the queen of the need for marriage. Lisa asks Vincent if he missed her, which is why he came to secretly visit her. The girl decides to make fun of the fair-haired man by asking him another question, whether he wanted to spy on her taking a bath. Vince doesn't respond to this, but his eyebrow begins to twitch nervously. The girl comes up to her mother and hugs her tightly. The fox strokes the baby's head and gently asks her why she brought the man here. The hero passes by the fox and barely audibly tells her that she is good at using him. The girl turns to the fair-haired man, sticking out her tongue and says that the ambassador still does not believe that he is really that same sage. Anudis reports that if a fair-haired man impersonates the revered sovereign of the Eastern Kingdoms, then this is a very serious crime. The man asks permission to test the hero for authenticity for the sake of the honor of the new head of China. The girl puffs out her cheeks, telling her mother that this man is as cunning as they are, because with such an excuse he will not offend anyone in any case. Anudis cuts his finger, and a drop of blood comes out. Blood drips onto the ground and the teacher begins to speak in some other language. A skeleton with a huge scythe begins to appear from the resulting glowing pictogram. The pink-haired girl asks if the technique used is a technique for summoning the spirit of the laws of the world. 
The messenger says that there are only a few great sages in the world who are able to use the power of laws. No technique is effective against the rebel, since he is the reaper of all things. Anudas turns to the sage, asking him to show him his true power. The fox cuddles her stuffed animal, saying that it has suddenly become very cold. Vince puts his hand on the baby's head and the warmth flows through his entire body. Smiling friendly, the man asks the girl if she is feeling better. The fox smiles happily, saying that she is no longer cold. Anudas, watching this scene from the side, grins at their calmness. The man orders his reaper to attack and he goes towards the sage. Vincent frowns at the pathetic, in his opinion, challenge of the spirit, and asks the envoys of Roxas if they have ever heard of the incarnation of the gods. Behind the blonde man's back, everything begins to sparkle with a bright golden color. Those arriving from another country look in shock at what the main character was able to summon. The real called incarnation of the divine appears before everyone. The sage says that he himself is God. Golden hands approach the reaper, intending to destroy him with one clap. The creature summoned by Anudas instantly disappears from this world. Such a strong clap creates a strong wind that almost blows away the ambassadors. Vincent tells the men to tell the king that although China is still stabilizing, he will not allow it to expand its influence. Standing completely naked before the sage, the ambassadors say that they understood him. The hero demands that the men leave quickly, and when they return, they find information about how their prince was crippled twelve years ago. After these words, a powerful gust of air knocks the messengers off their feet and carries them away from this place. The fox looks with admiration at her father, who protected him and his mother from unwanted guests. The girl turns to Lisa and asks her if she asked Vincent to help them. The queen smiles and says that the ambassador arrived suddenly, so the sage could not have known about it. Finally, the hero approaches the foxes and wants to start a conversation. However, he is interrupted by the cry of a baby who, unexpectedly for everyone, began to scream. Vince looks in surprise at his daughter's quick change of mood. The girl laughs and tells her parents that it only now dawned on her that she had finally found her father. Confidently pointing her finger at the man, the little girl asks her mother if he is really her father. The fox bends over to her daughter and says that she is absolutely right. Hearing the cherished words, the sage's daughter begins to happily jump around him. When the girl calms down a little, she comes up to her mother and quietly says that her dad, although very naive, is handsome. Vincent indignantly asks what the girls are talking about without enlightening him. The fox tells her daughter that their meeting with the hero was fate. The man got even angrier because the foxes had been pretending all this time that he wasn't there. The girl invites the sage to go with her to her chambers since her dress was cut by the air stream he released. The blonde man awkwardly looks at the girl's outfit, not understanding what he's supposed to do. The fox hugs his hand, leading him along. The girl runs happily after her parents. The heroes arrive in the peace of the imperial palace. The sage, without looking away, looks in a certain direction. Vincent stared at the silhouette of a girl changing clothes, who was taking off her clothes behind the tool. Realizing that he has been looking for too long, the hero immediately turns away, blushing. A girl asks her father why he doesn't look at her mother, because she is very beautiful. The man replies that she has two mature thoughts at such a young age, and he turned away because he showed respect. The little fox tells the fair-haired one that any man who has seen the queen at least once considers her beautiful. Vincent indignantly asks the little girl what her mother taught her. The girl replies that she learned to use all her charms to conquer her rivals. A voice behind the sage says that this child is very smart and a quick learner. Lisa comes out in a tight black outfit, smiling playfully. Vince looks at the girl's outfit, and again his cheeks turn red. Kazan says her daughter is growing up quickly and has already managed to tame a couple of wild and dangerous animals. The fair-haired man calls this absurd and asks to tell the truth. The girl says that, having reached a certain age, the baby wanted to find her father, but had to do it without anyone's help. The sage's face darkens because he does not understand why it was impossible to tell his daughter that her father was a great man. The fox puts her hand on the child's head, saying what made her find out about everything on her own. The girl confirms the fox's words and says that she went through reference books on foreign affairs of the state and compiled a list of possible people. After which the little girl checked everyone and there was only one candidate left, who resembled her father. The girl did not expect that the sage would appear on his own and she would finally have the opportunity to ask him for help. The blonde slams his fist into his palm, realizing that his daughter's training involved the use of gaming aspects. The fox says that the little fox is the heir to the throne of her kingdom, 
and therefore must navigate the environment of great powers. However, Vincent says that the girl may not become a princess, but simply be an ordinary happy child. Hearing the fair-haired man's words, the fox is first surprised and then sighs. The girl says that this world is still not so calm, so they must bear this burden. The hero responds to this that he wants peace not only for one country, but for the whole world. Looking into his daughter's eyes, the man confidently declares that his desire is for his children to live without worries. The girl rejoices, saying that she does not want to become wise, because it is necessary to teach many rules of decency and memorize a large amount of information. The vixen sits down on the bed and tells the fair-haired one that she used to perceive his words as nonsense. However, now the girl is looking forward to the day when the sage's wish comes true. The man looks with satisfaction at the fox lying on the bed. The next moment, it dawns on the hero that he still hasn't found out what he came to this kingdom for. Pointing his finger at the girl, the sage shouts at her, demanding to know what she did to him that day. The girl looks at her mother in surprise, asking if she used that same technique against her father. The pink-haired girl smiles tenderly and says that her baby is very smart. The blonde man asks in bewilderment what kind of technique we are talking about. The girl explains that her kingdom was built by talented and invincible people, and if she herself did not have the techniques to protect her family, she would not have reached such heights. The baby jumps on the bed, saying that she is from a line of nine-tailed foxes who have the ability to use charm and manipulate a person at will only once in a lifetime. The girl turns to her mother, asking her why she chose the fair-haired one, since ten years ago he was still far from the best masters of that time. The man shouts loudly that he is also interested in why the choice fell on him. The girl replies that this was the only time when someone sincere and brave was able to charm her. The hero first blushes, and then sighs, realizing that such an answer should have been expected. After this, the sage collapses on the floor from powerlessness. The blonde man says in a loud tone that all women are equally too dangerous. The pink-haired girl asks to tell why the man talks not only about her and her daughter, but also about someone else. The girl enthusiastically says that she also wants to hear her father's story. The sage tells the interested foxes what has happened to him over the past couple of days. After the story, the little girl jumps to her feet, asking why mom and dad can't get married if the others refused. The heroes look at each other after hearing the little fox's idea. However, the next moment they simultaneously shake their heads negatively, saying that they cannot do this. The girl is upset and puffs out her cheeks clarifying why her parents cannot get married. Blonde explains that a marriage between the leaders of two states is tantamount to the joining of a great state with the Divine One, which could start a civil war. Cushing strokes her daughter's hair, saying that it is unacceptable to ask the sage to join and stay in the Yulan kingdom. The baby is offended by the queen's words, not understanding why. Because of this, she should be left without a father when she first found him. The girl suddenly jumps up and screams that she hates her parents after which the little fox quickly runs out of the room. The sage extends his hand forward, asking his daughter to stop, but she does not obey him. Kaysen grabs the fair-haired man's hand, preventing him from going after the girl. The fox shakes his head, making it clear that this should not be done. Lisa says the baby has to go through this because she was born into a royal family. The queen, unlike her ancestors, was luckier because she was able to independently choose the father of the child. However, the main character does not listen to the pink-haired girl, saying that in such a situation the father should not stand by. The fair-haired one confidently reports that he will definitely come up with something. The girl blushes at his words and asks the man to stay with her a little before leaving. The fox says that her daughter is very happy because of the return of her father, as her tail unconsciously wagged next to him. The sage looks at the wagging tail of the queen herself. I ask her if she is happy. The girl confirms that at the moment she really is experiencing this feeling a little. A little fox sits on the roof of one of the buildings with frozen tears in her eyes. The blonde one joins the girl, landing next to her. However, the little girl, offended, turns her head in the direction opposite to the hero. The sage carefully sits down closer to the fox. But the next moment the girl quickly moves away from her father. Vincent looks at his daughter's tail, which she often swings from side to side. The sage remembers the words of his child's mother that when foxes are happy, they unconsciously begin to wag their tails. After a short silence, the man sincerely apologizes to the girl. The little girl asks her father why he is apologizing, because it is normal for children not to understand something related to adult matters. The hero looks sadly at the girl, 
thinking that it would be difficult for him to understand her thoughts if not for the words of the fox. The sage suddenly touches the top of the little fox's head and begins to stroke it. The girl screams indignantly that she still doesn't know the man well, so he can't touch her head. Blonde says he wants to give him a gift for their first meeting. A happy smile appears on the fox's face, and she asks if she can wish for whatever she wants. The sage answers her question positively. The baby points to the starry sky and asks to give her one of the stars. Vincent rises, saying that in that case he would get one for her. The man touches the girl's head and a golden glow begins to emanate from her body. The little fox laughs joyfully and shouts that she is soaring. The baby asks her father to fly even higher, to which he immediately agrees. The heroes rise to the sky and stop opposite the queen of the night, the moon. The fox looks at the stars around her with delight, saying that this is the first time she has seen them so close. Vincent asks his daughter to watch him closely as he is about to get one of them. The sage points his hand towards the sky using the technique of moving the stars. One of them begins to sparkle brighter every second, approaching the heroes. However, the star turns out to be a huge flaming meteorite. The citizens of the kingdom look with horror at the approaching danger, thinking that this is their end. The fox looks out of the window of his palace, realizing that the fair-haired one is again plotting something grandiose. The little fox, fearing the cosmic body, covers her eyes, fearing that the star will crash into them. However, the hero calms her down and tells her not to worry. A man flies up to a meteorite and touches it with his palm. The sage uses a special technique to destroy the shell of the star. A stone appears from a cosmic body with a flame sealed inside it. Vincent gives the star to his daughter, who looks at it with admiration. The blonde one smiles happily because the little girl liked the gift. However, the girl turns away offended, saying that he cannot gain her favor by giving her one star. At this reaction, the sage begins to laugh. The little fox asks why he is laughing, to which her father replies that her mother told her about the peculiarity of their tales. Realizing that she has been declassified, the girl begins to hit the man's chest. Vince apologizes and says that if problems arise again, she can call him with the help of this star. The little girl, still a little offended, asks if he's lying. Vincent says that of course it's true, because he always keeps his word. The main character invites him and his daughter to return, since they took what they came for. Finally, the man asks his daughter's name, to which she says that her name is Sabrina. The fox, who had been waiting for the heroes all this time, looks at them in surprise. The girl did not expect to see such an idol between father and daughter. Keshin smiles with relief. I understand that the fair-haired man kept his promise. Vincent says that it is already late, and it is time for the foxes to die. But he needs to go, since there are important things left in the country. Sabrina waves goodbye to the man, asking him to visit them more often. At the request, the sage extends his little finger, and he and his daughter take an oath to each other. The little girl says that for the promise to count, the fair-haired one must also swear with his mother. Vincent looks at the girl unsure if she will want to do this. However, the fox independently extends her little finger to him. The heroes pronounce the words for an oath to keep the promise forever. After this, Vincent flies away from the Yulan kingdom. The man flies with a very happy expression on his face, remembering everything that happened that day. Having come to his senses, the sage realizes that he was too immersed in himself. Blonde is horrified as his heart is once again in turmoil. The hero takes a deep breath and several pillars of water rise towards him from the ocean. Having gained energy and restored the circulation of the heart, Vince exhales. Since the fair-haired man became a father for the first time, due to the unusual warmth, he was filled with experiences that he had not experienced before. Thanks to this, he was able to develop a new outstanding technique, the absorption and eruption of heaven and earth. Vincent reflects on the fact that in a short period of time he had children from three absolutely impossible women. The sage decides to find Ethan Fair and consult with him, because he is called an incomparable advisor. Vince arrives at the House of Heavenly Chess. The man takes a step towards the building, but immediately stops. Blonde wonders what he should tell Ethan. The thoughts are interrupted by the door, which opens on its own, inviting the hero inside. Ethan, sitting on the floor, asks the blonde man why he doesn't break in on him as usual. Vince feels awkward about the way he approached the man earlier. The sage is surprised that he caught the advisor cooking. Ethan invites Vincent to the table, offering him some of his cooking. The man puts food in his mouth and tells Fair that he is probably the only one in the world who thought of cooking on a Moro chessboard. 
Ethan says that he has done all the calculations for China and now his board is only intended for him to drink, eat, and play on it for his own pleasure. Since ancient times, strategists have been inventive and resourceful. But Ethan Fair made a huge breakthrough in the field of calculus. The man invented the great art of calculus, the name of which is the celestial mechanism. Man calculates in God Yang, and before Ethan's calculations all conspiracies and intrigues were defenseless. However, after a while, the man reached his limit and exhausted the power of his life. At a time when China began to stabilize, so Fair then said that his heavenly calculations were over and now everything depended on the sage. Pouring the drink into the cup, the strategist asks the fair-haired man why he was looking for it. Vince hesitates and does not dare to start a conversation about what happened. Ethan decides to start by asking if he has a friend who is having problems. The hero happily knocks on the table, confirming Fair's words. The strategist then asks if his friend is in love and if he suddenly has a child. The blonde boy happily palms again and answers Ethan's questions positively. However, it dawns on the man that the strategist could not know all this, so he asks him whether he has entered the realm of calculations. Fair says that this is not the case and asks to tell him more about his friend. The sage sighs and begins the story, but on his own behalf. The fair-haired man stops short and continues the story from his friend's perspective. Vincent says that the guy was always too busy with work and did not communicate with the opposite sex, but suddenly found out that he had children from three women. The hero grabs the cup and drinks the contents in one gulp. The man makes a loud noise and puts the bowl on the table and says that his friend asked him for advice. But Vince is also a bachelor, so he doesn't know what to do. Ethan eats the food he has prepared with great appetite and asks the sage to continue his story, which looks like a melodrama. Vince is embarrassed by what Fair called his current life and says there is nothing he can do to help his friend. The man says that he came to the strategist because he had to do everything in his power to help the guy. Ethan stretches, grinning that even though the world is not being destroyed and people's lives are not in danger, the sage is still worried. The hero is annoyed by such words, so he grabs him by the clothes, saying that if something happened to him, he would also worry. Fair agrees with the man and asks him to let him go, as he has a weak heart. The blonde man sits back down in his seat and asks him to quickly give him some advice. The strategist sits motionless for a couple of seconds, as if thinking about what to say to the hero. However, the next moment, Ethan bursts out laughing throughout the entire hut, unable to stop. Still chuckling, the man says he can't pretend anymore. Vincent raises his fist threateningly, saying that with such a reaction he is asking for a beating. Fair calms down and asks the sage if he remembers that 15 years ago the strategist made 50 astronomical calculations for the only time in his life. The hero nods positively and clarifies why the man decided to talk about this. Ethan says that these calculations are a divine technique that calculates all possibilities and all human plans are within them. What arises in the mind is not just arithmetic symbols and words. In fact, this is a real scene when you see all the possible developments of events from the very beginning. These scenes can predict both failure and various opportunities for success. Vincent asks what different options the strategist saw. Fair says that there was an end in which he united the heavenly kingdom, and the sage died five years ago saving him. There was also an end when the thousand-armed man united the demonic path, and then forcefully plunged the people into the abyss of disaster. Vince is amazed by Ethan's story and calls this ability incredible. The strategist says that the blonde's meeting with the girls is the result of the starting point that Fair chose. The hero points his finger at the man and shouts that he knew about everything from the very beginning. Ethan corrects Vincent, saying that he didn't just know, but knew more than him. The blonde man again grabs the strategist by the clothes, asking why he didn't immediately tell him everything and put him in a bad light. Having calmed down a little, the sage sits back and says that he has the feeling that Ethan is the most powerful in this world. However, Fair denies the man's words, saying that everything is not at all as it seems to him. The strategist says that it is the sage who is truly strong, since Ethan only made the choice, the rest was done by Vincent. The hero gloomily asks why Fair didn't choose the option of uniting the Celestial Empire, because with his talent the world would be a better place. Ethan says that this is because, with this outcome, they could not, as they do now, sit and chat about life so well. After these words, the men hit their bowls and continue to enjoy each other's company together. Having eaten, Vincent asks the strategist to tell him what to do, because he knows everything. However, 
Fair shakes his head, saying that if he could figure everything out, then his brain would have exploded long ago. The hero does not lose heart and says that Ethan, with his intelligence, can still give him advice. The man smiles awkwardly, saying that he was also busy fighting, so he is not particularly knowledgeable about what to do in such a situation. Vincent sighs understandingly and sadly upon hearing the strategist's words. Suddenly, Ethan moves quickly and is next to the sage, placing his hand on his shoulder. The man asks the fair-haired man how they used to survive all the dangers of war. Vince confidently says that they moved forward despite the difficulties, crushing everyone. Fair suggests that the hero think of the current situation as a dangerous battle. However, the sage does not understand the strategist's ideas, because love and war are not the same thing. Ethan does not agree with the blonde's words, because these things are no different, and you need to accept everything as it is and move forward. Vincent looks into his bowl, which reflects his uncertain expression, wondering if he can do this. Fair moves closer, saying that the man can only be envied. The strategist reminds the sage that he has children from three unique, stunning beauties. Ethan says that thanks to this, the life of the main character will become much more interesting. After a while, Vince flies into the air, and the men say goodbye. Fair smiles mysteriously, looking at the fair-haired man, saying that she is preparing for even greater surprises for him. Flying forward, the sage reflects that he has gone through bloody massacres, so he should not be afraid of what is happening to him now. Stopping in a calm place, the hero decides to recover through meditation. Having finally calmed down, Vincent thinks about what to do next since he, as before, faces the battle. The sage comes to the realization that the powder from the scorching sun was the source of the problem in the situation with Roxana and Viola. The man decides that his priority now is to avoid a new tragedy by getting rid of the powder. After this, the sage plans to discuss with Roxana how to deal with his son's troubles, then discuss the upbringing, education and future of their daughter together with Viola. And also, Vincent will need to find time to visit Lisa and Sabrina. The blonde man snaps his fingers and says that he has thought of the perfect plan of action. The sage sits relaxed on his throne on the roof of his city. At his request, his brother flies to the man, asking why he called him. Vince says he has a secret he needs help with. The black-haired man is greatly surprised by his brother's words and enthusiastically asks what he wants to share. The hero orders the guy to go to court and find the most powerful love potion, Scorching Sun Powder. The brother smiles wickedly and whispers to Vincent, asking him since when has he been interested in such things. For these words, a strong snap of fingers from the sage lands on the black-haired man's forehead. The guy apologizes upset, not expecting what he could get for such words. The blonde man repeats the order, saying that this powder is very dangerous and needs to be sealed. Black Hair says that the Earth Hearing Court has direct information about this substance, but there is a problem. The sage asks in bewilderment what the problem is. Vince's brother says he'll have a hard time getting rid of the powder. The hero says that by getting rid of this thing, the world will stabilize. Otherwise a large number of people may suffer. The black-haired man approaches the man, whispering that the powder is produced by the Helles family. But Vincent asks which family he is talking about. The guy reminds the sage of the girl who once sheltered Vince and gave him food, of the wise merchant, Tyra Helles, who is part of this family. Blonde jumps to his feet from his throne and says that that girl with her character could not do such a thing. However, the black-haired man says that this information is from the court of earthly hearings, and these are not just rumors, but a confirmed fact. From these words the man, unable to stand, sits back on the throne. Vincent sighs, saying that he will think it over again, and asks to leave him alone. The main character still cannot believe that the head of the number one trading group in the Middle Kingdom and his old friend are involved in the story with the powder. The man decides to go to the girl and settle the whole matter peacefully and quietly, given their relationship. Blonde arrives at the business center of all China, the city of Spherium. The sage floats in the air and carefully looks at the building of the main office of the Helles family. Vincent's eyes glow bright yellow, and he uses his celestial eyes absolute vision. The technique helps the hero determine that the building has a sixth-level magical barrier, and underground there is a magic circle that can kill an immortal. There are also five supreme masters in the building, ranking at the levels of the top 20 in the world. The sage reflects on how much material resources are spent on providing all the barriers and maintaining the five great masters in one organization. Vince understands that if he came to this place as a sage by invitation, then it would be inappropriate to interfere with the underground organization 
and he would simply be kicked out. Blonde is in great debt to Tyra, so he will not be able to use his power, as against the ambassadors from Rakshasa. The hero exhales and decides to enter the organization quietly and unnoticed. The man is hiding behind the neighboring buildings located next to the main office of the traders, observing the situation at the entrance. Vincent notices that a girl is handing an employee card to a security guard and he begins to scan it. This is the latest technology in which the body's genetic information is encoded onto a map. Even the most superior camouflage techniques can only change the appearance, but they can never replicate the subject's genetics. However, there are a few people in the world who can bypass this system, and Vincent is one of them. The sage feels great excitement about infiltrating somewhere, since he has often participated in espionage in the past. A girl with brown hair and beautiful shape is walking down the street. The badge hanging around her neck indicates that the fair-haired woman is an employee of the Helles family office. The girl calmly walks down the street until she passes an alley. Vince holds the office employee he put to sleep in his arms. A man apologizes to a sleeping girl for borrowing her appearance. The sage uses the ultimate transformation technique, the appearance of all living things, which copies all the genetic information of the target. The fair-haired one becomes a complete copy of the fair-haired one, starting from appearance and genes, ending with form. Vincent examines the internal state of the body and notices that the girl has problems with the spleen and stomach. For help, the hero decides to heal the causes of the light-haired girl's slight illness. After this, the man uses an invisibility spell and a time delay technique. A protective dome appears around the real employee of the Helles family office for absolute safety. Vince approaches the building and security asks to see his ID. Smiling sweetly, the fair-haired woman confidently hands her employee card to the man. The guard uses the celestial eye technique to read the genetic match. The man gives the girl's card back, saying that the check has been passed and she can proceed. Vincent smiles friendly again, thinking to himself that the first level has been completed. Going inside, the sage looks around and notices a man sitting on the floor in the lotus position. From such a sight, the main character cannot contain his laughter. The man in the guise of a girl cannot believe that he met Mr. Mandatory Abstinence in this building. While practicing the golden technique, the monk lost his way and was unable to control his desires, becoming despised by this world. However, the man was able to acquire a unique astral energy, which is the cultivation of the devilish path in Buddhism. Once upon a time, the fair-haired man fought with a man, but could not destroy him, but only subdue him, and in the end they became brothers. Vincent thinks that he and the monk have not seen each other for a long time and he is also very surprised that a man is watching the entrance to this office. The girl heads towards the elevator, thinking that it will be very simple. The elevator arrives at their floor, and the men standing in front of the employee enter it. The sage follows those who have entered, but his path is blocked by the hand of a monk sitting on the floor. The bald man approaches the hero's face, looking at him carefully. Vincent is tense by the monk's gaze, and he begins to think that he has screwed up something and has been declassified. The man tells the girl that she broke her promise and did not come to the hotel, where he waited for her all night. The monk's face fills with tears and crying, he says that he carefully planned a date for the fair-haired woman. The sage breaks out in a sweat as he did not expect the two to be lovers. The monk grabs the girl by the hands and presses her to him. The man purses his lips and tells the fair-haired woman to compensate him for his feelings and disappointed expectations. Vincent moves his bald head away in horror and tries to break free from the death grip. The monk says that he will not let the girl go until she gives a reason and screams at the top of her voice. The sage in his heart is glad that he knows how to deal with this guy. Otherwise, he would be in serious trouble. Then swings and hits the monk in the face. The hero chose a tactic in which he first gives a hard slap in the face, and then throws a question at him. The fair-haired woman approaches the man, and asks him if he himself can figure out the reason for her absence from the hotel. The monk falls to his knees and bows deeply to the girl, apologizing and promising to think about his behavior. Vincent pushes his hair back, telling the man to think it over or he might not look for her, after which the sage enters the elevator, and it slams shut right in front of the monk's nose. The hero sighs with relief, as he was on the verge of exposure. Vince notices that the elevator changes every twenty floors to prevent intruders on the top floor. The girl looks around trying to figure out who the doorman on this floor might be. Near the elevator, the main character notices an elderly man sitting on a chair. Suddenly the doorman opens his eyes and fixes them on the fair-haired woman. 
In the man, Vincent recognizes the wise accountant, Henry Shin. This man does not forget what he saw. He was a strategist in the house of Dong. But after his defeat, he lost his job and ended up here. The man beckons the main character with a hand gesture, asking him to come over. The girl points uncertainly to herself, silently asking if he is addressing her. When Vincent approaches the man, he asks who the man who came to his floor is. The sage quickly remembers the name of that girl and calls himself Lia Ju. However, the accountant does not back down and asks who the girl really is. Vince tries to laugh it off and says she's just getting up for work. The man says he knows every person working in the building, their gender, position, and tasks. After this, the accountant names the entire history of Lia Ju's work in this organization. The main character says that he was sent here by the leader, who asked him to come here this morning. Rubbing his beard, the elderly man asks the fair-haired woman the name of her leader. The sage understands that it is pointless to lie to Henry Shin, since the one who could do it has not yet been born. Vince comes to the realization that he can still do something. The man's eyes are filled with a golden haze and he uses the technique of reversing yin and yang. Everyone around freezes and the lobby is filled with silence. The accountant looks around, realizing that absolutely all the employees have become motionless. This technique allows you to control the flow of time and space around you, which is a unique ability of the main character. The elderly man says in disbelief that the same sage is standing in front of him. Vincent sighs, saying that it really is. The accountant rises from his seat to greet the strongest and is surprised that the hero arrived under cover and without declaring war. The man wonders if the sage came to the head of the Hele's family to discuss important personal matters. Vince says that he enjoys doing business with smart people and asks for help in this. The strategist says that he will be happy to help, since the hero and the Hele's family have a close relationship and he wants to strengthen them. Vincent says this is an action worthy of a wise strategist. The sage wonders if he can rise further in this case. The man says he has no problem with it, but there is something that could cause a slight problem. The accountant warns that there are three strong people upstairs, one of whom is an old acquaintance of the fair-haired man. The fair-haired woman extends her hand to shake, thanking him for his help and saying that in the future he will repay him for this. Henry responds by respectfully shaking hands and asking them to take care of everything upstairs, at which point the heroes part ways.